Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm Lisa Craig Morton, the art coordinator at the Ohio State University Faculty Club, and I'm here this afternoon with Art Tells a Story, Let It Be Yours, to interview Granville artist Paul Hamilton. Paul had a solo exhibit at the Faculty Club last fall, and I haven't talked to him since, so I'm going to check in with him this afternoon and see what he's been working on since then. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Paul first. Um, he has a fine arts degree from the Columbus College of Art and Design, and he's a member of the Columbus Art League and the American Impressionist Society. He works in several different mediums, installation, sculpture, and painting, and he's represented by the Hammond Park Galleries in the Short North Arts District. Paul's work has been featured um, in many exhibits throughout the United States, and it also has been in American, paint, American Artists Magazine and Country Living Magazine. His work has also been juried into the prestigious National Mid-Year Exhibit at the Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown. And I think that Paul is in the gallery in the short north and we're getting ready to connect with him. Hey, Paul, how are you doing today? Thank you, Lisa. I'm doing great. How are you? It's nice to see you. Yeah, it's so great to see you. And you're looking good. Like the, the uh, months at home alone haven't done you any harm that so it's good to see you. I wanted to start out by um, just asking a little bit. I know that you have been a very creative person since you were a small child and that you started painting at a very early age. I was wondering if you could tell, tell us just a little bit about how you got started and how you came down this path as a painter to be a full-time professional painter. Okay, well, that's a great question. Um, my uh, art tendency started very young. Uh, I was a very, very young child. Uh, I think maybe three, four years old, my parents started noticing that I was organizing rocks and sticks in the yard and drawing in chalk and stuff like that. Um, uh, fortunately, I grew up on the Kennedy Space Center, which is in uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida. And that was in 1965, I was born. So the space race was going on. My, my father worked for NASA, and there was a lot of energy and excitement uh, in our town. Uh, we were right there at the, the onset of the, the first Apollo missions going to the moon. And I think what that did is it opened my mind up to exploration. It opened my mind up to the ideas and thoughts that uh, we can create, we can do things, we can achieve. That was sort of the, the national sentiment at the moment. And I was being a young young person at the time, I think I, I learned a lot from that. And I began drawing and exploring in, um, as a young child. And I know that the earliest I know is when I was five years old, I was in kindergarten and um, the, uh, the, the project for the, the kindergarten students was to do a self-portrait. And I thought, well, that's pretty neat. And they, the teacher gave us an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper to do our face on. And I told her that's not going to be big enough. <laughs> and and uh, she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm three and a half feet tall. I'm going to need, you know, at least five or six pieces. And I, I did a, I built my whole body out of, paper and then I drew me, me on there, which I don't think anyone really noticed what I was doing in class, except for when the parent-teacher conference came and they hung all these portraits up for the, for the parents to see. Mine was life-size. And um, <laughs> I think at that point, I think my mom and dad knew that I was certainly gifted and certainly, um, you know, not, not an ordinary artist. I was, I was sort of a going to explore different boundaries and take things a different way. And I know uh, that was kindergarten. And then first grade, I won my first art contest. And I um, that was for a AAA poster contest for the school. Um, and by fourth grade, I, I don't know how old you are in fourth grade, but I was probably seven or six. I did my first one-man show. 
and that was uh, orchestrated by myself. So I curated it, orchestrated it, hung it, and um, manned the gallery, which was the hall outside the bathroom. Um, and all of this was on my own. I just, I had a, a deep desire just to create, create art, to paint, um, to continue to just explore different things. And at an early age, I did young, young drawings like any child would, but I also built a lot of things. I, I found myself building models and building things out of cardboard and paper and costumes. Um, and, you know, as, as I went on, as I got older, I realized that um, this really was going to be my path. And uh, high school, I began doing the outdoor art festivals, setting up my tent, selling my paintings. Um, so when it came time to college, there was really no question as what I would do. Yeah. Um, and uh, I received a scholarship to come to Columbus College of Art and Design. And that was, um, that would have been in 1984. And um, while I was at the Columbus College of Art and Design, I, I excelled quite a bit. I learned a lot. Um, and I began exhibiting work too. So that was um, quite good for me to, to be able to have an avenue to keep showing my work because I've been showing since fourth grade. So um, wow. as I, as I uh, got to CCAD, there was more opportunities for me to exhibit my work, to uh, keep exploring and, and, and continue on. So um, that, Paul, that was pretty much my early years. Paul, as you were growing up, other than what a typical elementary or middle school or high school art classes were, you know, part of the regular curriculum, did you ever have additional like private lessons or, you know, at an art museum take classes or anything like that? Or were you encouraged by your parents or was it just something that kind of happened organically and you just went for it? I think I pretty much went for it. Um, my parents were a hundred percent supportive as far as making sure I had materials, making sure uh, that my, I had pencils and drawing cardboard and, and um, they would supply me with everything they could. Um, one of my fondest memories was um, drawing paper was a, it was hard to, we didn't have printers and keep, you know, print, print paper everywhere. So my right. dad, um, NASA paperwork and, uh, you know, from NASA documents that were uh, no longer classified. And then I would draw on the back of that because, you know, he would have a stack of sort of early, early recycling. Um, right. That's early funny because. Yeah. My dad was a professor, and when we were little, we always used his papers and stuff like that. We had stacks of paper from OSU, like you said, that was you know sort of decommissioned or no longer being used, or obviously at OSU it wasn't classified. But we we had stacks of that, and that was our art paper in our house too when I was growing up. So it's pretty. I still yeah. have I have drawings still in my uh, catalogs. If you flip it over, it's price analysis for Apollo Eleven. Oh my them. gosh! It's pretty. I mean, just that alone is pretty cool. Yeah, and that's weird. So it's it's pretty wow. neat. That is. Well, I remember last winter after we took down the faculty club show, um, you were putting up a lot of paintings on Instagram and Facebook, and that you were doing a lot of portraits. And um, I know a couple different people um, that were friends of mine and actually saw you had put up some signs around Granville saying, hey, you know, come sit for a portrait and I'm doing paintings. Tell me a little bit about that. And it, I mean, is that just like the natural thing to do in the winter months when you can't get outside? Or were, was that was there something more behind that that you were wanting to pursue portraiture? OK, that's a good question, Lisa. So. I think what happens with me as an artist, I focus, I hyper-focus. And you know, the Faculty Club show was a feature of about 20 landscape paintings that I've right. done. And I've painted landscapes for many years, and I think a lot of people know me as a landscape artist. Um, I've exhibited, I've had three solo exhibitions at the David Finley Gallery in New York City, and those were all landscape-based uh, exhibitions. And a lot of times what happens after I put up a big body of work like that, or I work a year for a show, I will change gears. Oh, okay. Um, sort of after it's hung it up, I change gears and try to explore different avenues just to keep myself fresh. And what I did this year is I, um, and it could be sculpture, it could be video, it could be 
music based. Um, I really just I, I, I test the waters for different things, and I found that uh, portraiture was was still in line with the painting, like the traditional painting style that I do. Yet it gave me another opportunity to express some of the ideas and thoughts that I that I have that maybe I can't get through with um, through some of the landscape work that I do. So that was sort of the genesis of that. Um, and yes, I, I was in need of models. So I put a poster up at Denison University and the local coffee shop asking people if they would mind to, to sit for their portrait. And I got pretty good response from it. Um, and, you know, I've really, I've really been happy with a lot of the portraits. Uh, I've done a lot more than maybe I've posted on, on Facebook and, and stuff like that. And we're kind of keeping the, this show that I'm coming up in the, the fall, September 4th. Um, I'm kind of hiding some of those or keeping those in the studio until that show. So you'll see. More. Okay. And, and do you do commissions? Like, you know, if, if I wanted to have a portrait of my husband, is that something that you would be interested in taking on? Or is it more just something like you said, it was kind of a deep dive on a topic that you wanted to go down that path? No, absolutely. Um, portraits is uh, something that I've been commissioned to do uh, quite a few of. It's, um, my first commission portrait was the uh, Bishop of Ohio, the Episcopalian. Oh, wow. And uh, he had his vestige on and, and the, the robes and everything. And that was a beautiful portrait. And that was my sort of my entrance into doing um, paintings uh, of uh, people for like a commission status. And, okay. And that painting is now hanging in Cincinnati at their with their collection of all the other dishes. Right, with the diocese um, or whatever. Yeah. If if, uh, if any of our viewers out there would like me to paint their portrait, I would be happy to do that, of course. So, and I've done quite a few through the gallery here. Um, Marlena and Laura have uh, really been really helpful in, in getting clients and people interested in portraiture work by myself. So, thanks for asking. Look, the first portrait I ever saw that, that you painted was um, a portrait of Jeff and Bobby Noe's daughter. Um, yeah that live out in Granville. And I, I remember their friends and um, fellow colleagues in the guest house business with me. And um, I remember going through the house and seeing this just stunning portrait of their daughter. And I said, Oh my gosh, who painted that? And they're like, Oh, that's Paul Hamilton. And I had never seen, you know, I knew you as the landscape painter that captured the Ohio scenery so beautifully. And um, when I saw the portrait of their daughter, I was just completely blown away. And I was just like, wow. Yeah, Paul knows how to do that too. It was pretty amazing. Okay. So, but it was fun to see you do it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously that I, that must have been a commission portrait where you know they you had pictures or she sat for or whatever. And it was yep. fun this winter to see um, you know just see you just like blowing through a bunch of different portraits and different types of people and whoever showed up from the yep. call that you put out. And that was really fun to see that. It was different than a you know someone sitting for their portrait to be made. So yeah, that was yeah. really fun. Yeah, so great. now that it's now that it's nice out and the weather has turned, uh, there's been a couple of days when it's been so beautiful. The last week, I've thought, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm living in a Paul Hamilton painting because the blue skies and everything. Have you been getting out more and doing more landscape, or are you moving in a different direction now? Well, I, I have done quite a few landscapes in the spring. That's my favorite time for painting in Ohio in spring. Uh, when we get that transparent color of the trees and the rich jewel right. tone of the earth and the, the colors start to change. So this spring I did quite a few paintings. Um, one of the things I've sort of transitioned to is doing some more urban style scenes, like the one that you can see behind me. Right. Some of the retro visitations of sort of like historic pieces from the past and kind of playing on that. They're more playful. Um, so I spent a lot of time driving around looking for old movie theaters and drive-ins and bars and restaurants and and uh, coffee shops and ice cream okay. shop, dairy bars that sort of thing it's really been a, a, a neat spring for me so far and has that been have you been out by granville and licking county or are you coming into columbus to do like the super urban scenes or where all have you been well where have i been i've been from dayton all the way to warren Oh my to gosh. Mansfield, through Youngstown to Sydney, 
Uh, okay. which nobody knows, nobody knows Sydney as well as I do because um, that happened to be uh, our favorite town that we drove to. Uh, we went there for a coffee shop to, to do a painting of, and there ended up being all kinds of cool stuff. So, um, okay. Sydney, Ohio is a pretty neat place. So, yeah, I really get around different different places quite a bit. All right, I'm going to stop really quick and do a little interlude here because um, as part of Art Tells a Story, Let It Be Yours, um, we have a trivia question that we want to throw out. And so those who are viewing us live today, we have a trivia question. And um, Paul is represented by Hammond Harkins Gallery in the short north. And the question is, what is the city in which Hammond Harkins Gallery first started? So I'm going to put that out there. And um, if anyone wants to sign in or log in through Facebook Live and, and know the answer to that, there is a prize um, courtesy of Hammond Harkins for a $25 gift card to Lemongrass, which is a fabulous restaurant, Asian fusion restaurant in the short north. So I'm going to throw that out there. And then I'll just kind of flip back, Paul, and talk to you a little bit more. I heard a rumor that for your upcoming show, you've been working on some sort of 3D mechanical installation art and um, wondering what brought that on, if that's something new that sort of came out of the isolation and the stay-at-home orders, or is it just something I know you've done a few of those in the past? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the, yeah, the mechanical stuff is, is something that I think – I'm very uh, interested in movement in art, and that's, I think, what makes some of my landscapes and other paintings so successful is the movement, the way your eye moves to the canvas and what, what emotions are, are stirred. And I started doing some mechanical pieces that fo focus on movement, and with that, I tied in a, a graphic design approach where there, there's a lot of movement and then there's a lot of words, so the written word. Um, and almost like an advertising, sort of moving, moving advertising kind of thing. And I've done several pieces that explore different topics, topical things. Uh, some are personal, some are um, societal topics. And one of the pieces that I did uh, focus on during the, the COVID um, pandemic, which we're still in, by the way, um, was a piece, and it was called Open Your Eyes. And what this piece was, was a moving, it was a, about a four foot tall freestanding sculpture. And it has a rotating panel. And on that panel, it says, open your eyes. And almost, it, it, it's reminiscent of possibly the hypnotist wheels, maybe that you've seen where they spin, and you go into another world, and then you, you tell the truth, basically, um, I hope. <laughs> and the... The point behind this piece was um, there's a lot of frustration over the COVID uh, pandemic. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of emotions that are coming out of this that I think society has either repressed or not experienced in a long time. And the idea of this, the reason it says "open your eyes," was. Um, as viewers would look at this, they would, um, it, it's a look inward, basically. So open your eyes might mean look and see what you see, but it, it basically was, was tuned so that it was a look inward. Basically, what do you feel? So um, when you look at yourself, what do you see? So when I see this, this uh, tragedy unfolding, this would be me personal, um, I, I see a lot of different things. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uh, maybe anger that we can't control that we're, we're, we're in a state of uh, denial. And then there's also the other side of it where you feel a lot of gratitude. Maybe that we are okay. I am okay. I haven't been affected personally. Um, it's, it's a way for us to look beyond just the initial... Um, feelings of maybe what this pandemic has brought on and maybe how has this changed my life? Am I more compassionate? Do I look at our environment different now? As you see, as the governments and cities and traffic shut down, it looked like our earth was greening up again. And some of the things that we had done to the earth were starting to heal themselves. So it's, it's a way to look at like, 
you know what, there's more to this than maybe I originally thought. So, um, and you know what, that's for each individual um, to, to explore and to look. But I wanted to do a piece that was more introspective like that. And that, that basically, um, moving on to some of my other mechanical pieces, they are very introspective and they, they tell a story, and, but then they make you think a lot um, about what that really means. And uh, I, I tend to, to uh, do a lot of these kind of things in my spare time, I guess you could call it, um, because they are just ways, another way for me to explore artistically. Um, and also use the talents that I have for mechanical, like operations and motors and machine and electricity and video. So um, I, I really do explore a lot of different mediums. Very interesting. I can't wait to see that. And that's going to be in the September show? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. So it sounds like the, <coughs> the whole experience of this virus and the the spin off both the economic and the isolation and societal and everything um, has really been thought provoking for you. Are there things that you have experienced during this time, which it's really an unprecedented time. Are there things that you want to take with you when this is over, if we ever do kind of get back to normal or whatever the new normal is, are there things that you have learned or experienced during this time that you want to take forward into the rest of your life? Well, I think, I think it's a, an attitude of gratitude um, and empathy. And, you know, I think a lot of us, as we go through life, I think we all feel sort of like we're bulletproof and nothing's going to happen to us. And we can, live our lives a certain way and there's really not a lot of recourse. Um, but I think for me personally, I think this has brought out um, some feelings that, you know what, we're, we're pretty fragile. And being fragile, you you look to others for help and you learn to help others. Um, because with every, every feeling of fragility that you have, then you can offer, if I feel this way, everyone else must feel like they're fragile too. And I think we're fragile only to the point that we isolate ourselves and we don't rely on other people for help or ask for help or accept help. Um, mm -hmm. That's a big thing. Um, so that, that feeling of, um, you know what, we do need each other, even though we can't see each other. <laughs> and we will find a way. Um, we will find a way to get through this and we'll be stronger for it. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. It, it, it sounds like you are finding ways to stay connected with people and with your community and with, you know, things that you love to paint, like going for a drive and finding, you know, something that's in the Ohio or the landscape or whatever. So it sounds like you are finding ways to stay connected. Yep. Even in I'm, isolation. I'm staying connected. Um, I'm with my closest friends. We're, we're doing stuff. Um, my family is close to me. I, I see my daughter once a week and we paint together. I talk to my son. He's in Michigan, so I don't get to see him. But, um, you know, things are things are are good. And, and I think um, as as we move on, I think we're going to see like as we look back, it's like that wasn't that wasn't uh, a bad thing that I got to see my daughter every week. And, you know, I think we're going to look at the positives of some of this and um you know, I, I just hope, really. Yeah, I, I, I find myself thinking that too, that, that there are things about this experience that I think are very positive and that I do want to carry forward into the rest of my life. So, um, and I, I am always the optimist, you know, I'm the, I'm not the cup half full girl, I'm the cup runneth over girl, <laughs> but yeah. uh, so I'm always looking for that. But, but I would agree with you. I think that I I think and I hope that we'll re reflect back on this time and, and look at it in that light. So, well, hey, I'm going to wrap this up here. We're getting kind of close to the end. Is there anything else that you would want to share with folks that are viewing today or um, talk about before we wrap up? Well, I just want to say thank you for, for interviewing. I think this is a wonderful way to stay connected and stay relevant. Um, I am working very hard right now on a show that is going to open at Hammond Markets Gallery in the short north. Um, that will be in September, I believe September 4th. 
Um, and that will be a show that encompasses uh, sculpture, um, some digital light work stuff, a lot of landscape paintings, some contemporary work, uh, some, some machines, some of these urban scenes like this. Nice. Also, also, this will be one of the first times I exhibit some full-size portraits and uh, some very powerful pieces. So it's really a breadth. Of, of offering that, that I show here at the Hidden Parkins Gallery. And I'm, and I'm grateful to have this opportunity, so. Well, it sounds really exciting and it sounds like there is definitely gonna be something for everyone in oh, this, yeah. um, in the exhibit that's coming up in September. And I know that um, Hammond Harkins has been busy during this time that they haven't been open to the public physically um, in creating an online catalog and that, that folks who are watching today or people who are interested can see more of your work online at hammondharkins.com as well right away and uh, we will certainly look forward to that show in september so in closing i want to thank um reese brothers productions for creating this project and i think greatest greater columbus arts council i believe or ohio arts council was part of the funding of it so thank you to all of those entities and to Nicolette Cinemagraphics, Nikki has been amazing and she's been behind the scenes making sure that this goes off smoothly this afternoon. And this will continue, I believe, through um, um, through the end of August, maybe. And so each Thursday, we'll be coming to you with a different artist and a different interviewer and a conversation. And we hope you'll join us for that as well. So th thank you for this afternoon. And Paul, it was great to see you. I really enjoyed that. You too. Stay safe out there. All right, you too. Take care. Yeah, bye.